Hey everybody, this is Mr. Huma, and today we are in Minecraft yet again. We are on the server that I mentioned in my Craft the World, uh, the one that uh, Matthew is hosting. And I mentioned in my Craft the World episode uh, that I'd be kind of treating this as a single player, and I think I am going to stick with that. So, yeah, so this is my base. This is the entrance to my base. Uh, I removed... I had some farms and stuff up and around there. I removed all that, so it's a completely hidden uh, doorway here. So we'll just come on in here. This door, uh, I can't remember the name of the person who made this. Uh, it was made for a YouTuber called XB Crafted, I think. Uh, and I'll have a link in the description to, uh, to on how to make the door. I made some changes to it so that it cannot be um, locked, or not locked, but it can't be broken. Uh, in the original design, if you would press the button in the middle of the opening closing sequence, uh, basically it would mess up the pistons on this side here, and you'd have to go in and break them and uh, replace two of them. So I just I added a little lock onto it so that uh, so that can't happen. <clears throat> so let's see uh, let's, let's see if I can even do this. It is possible to mess it up. Yeah, so you can do this. Which, you know, that's messed up, but then as soon as you hit the button again, it just goes fine. So it, it doesn't it doesn't permanently mess up. It's uh, just, you know, temporary. So yeah, we have that door. Uh, this is the design that I went with here. Kind of similar to what I did on the dome server. We got the kind of the, the colder colors. We got the, kind of like the brighter, colder colors. So uh, I think on the dome, what do we have? Stone? brick floors and then we had birch plank walls no 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 no. we had stone brick walls birch plank floors and then the blue carpet uh i think yeah and then we had the ice accent with the half slabs on the top yeah that's how we had it so i i still have um packed ice in here with sea lanterns and then we have some iron to try and break up the walls a bit uh then just sandstone along the walls and then iron running along the floors uh, yeah, so I quite like how this base design looks actually. I really like the colder colors, so it's I like that a lot. Uh, then we come over here. You can tell my base isn't quite done. This will be moved to the enchanting thing, which we'll have around the corner over there. Uh, and then my bed, I, I'm not even worrying about that yet. Uh, this is my storage system, um, also not my design. And I don't believe I've made any changes to this. Yeah, I haven't made any changes to this um, storage system. It's a silent auto sorting one. So you just, similar to what I have in my single player, you preset all the locations for your items and then it just auto sorts it by, you know, you input it in there. It's not done yet though. I've got five more chests that I have to figure out first. And we also have some bulk storage here. So we have cobble, stone, and then we have dirt here. Uh, what do we have in this one? Uh, stone brick? Yeah, stone brick here. And I don't have anything in here yet, so I have to figure that one out. Uh, yeah, and then some of these, you know, there's nothing in there. Uh, they're not done yet. But yeah, so this is the storage system that I've got. Uh, link will be in the description if you want to build this one as well. Uh, and then if we come back here... Yeah, I don't... If, if any of you have made the door, this, this door design here, uh, you can see that I changed the input a little bit here. So instead of coming down and along, you know, connecting into there. Oh shoot, now I'm stuck in here. Uh, basically, I just had both the inputs on their own lines running along to the back here. And then I just had this little lock. So whenever this was turned off, which means that the door is doing its thing, this will pull back so you can't activate it again and it won't you know when these turn back on that means the door is ready to be opened again because it's all finished its sequence so I just added a little lock here so it does make it quite a bit bigger uh, in size two or three blocks or so uh, but you can't it's impossible to break it as far as I can tell so yeah so that's all I did there so yeah there's that that's my modifications uh, then over here we have the furnace system that I've got set up, and I'm quite proud of this here. Um, we have up to 40 furnaces, which will have an output of 4 items per second. And it wasn't actually until yesterday that I realized the limitation of this, of the speed, 4 items per second. It won't actually reach that speed because of how I have my output. 
Um, I might change my output design so that I could support that. No, actually, because that's limited to the speed of a hopper. Yeah, so it's actually limited to 2.5 items per second output. But it'll still smelt 4 items per second at, like, at the average speed or whatever. And so you choose, you know, how many furnaces you want. 2 furnaces, 4, 10, 16, 22, 28, 34, 40. So you just choose how many you want by changing which direction the arrow is facing. You put your input into this chest. And uh, yeah, then it does its thing. And it will output into this chest. We do have an input for fuel, which I'm using blaze rods currently, as I do have a, a blaze farm. So fuel gets inputted into here, and then equally sorted among all of the furnaces. And if this light is on, then that means that the very first furnace... So this is the furnace that's going to be getting used the most. Even if I put a single item in here, it's going to go into the very first furnace. So this one will get used the most, and if this one is out of fuel, then odds are they're all out of fuel, basically. That's so it's a really a really simple way of knowing if, if I need to refuel. If this thing is out, then that basically means I have no fuel left. So because yeah, I mean I I don't think I've ever used the 40 furnaces. The highest I've done I think is 22. So but if I ever need to smelt a whole bunch of cobblestone or something, you know, I have that option. Uh, yeah, so this is the furnace here, and this is all my own design, so there won't be a link or anything to make it yourself. It's pretty straightforward, though. Uh, we can hop back here real quick and show you. So it's just the fuels run along the side here. I'm going to get out of the way for that guy. Uh, these are timers, so this is where the fuel dispenses, is into here and here. So basically, if... This thing will stop here and the fuel will dispense or it would dispense i have a lock on it currently but it would dispense uh 20 items and then it would go along there's a total of 20 furnaces per side so each furnace gets a single item uh the top hoppers here are of course for the uh the input to input your smelted items you can see down here underneath the furnaces we have some hoppers and there's going into a minecart chest that's running back and forth and if you look right down there, there's a couple hoppers right at the middle, and those get sent to a clock here, into a dropper, run on a clock, that sets it into a water stream, and that gets sensor sent around, and then a dropper array to shoot it all up. Uh, and then this thing here, basically, if this has a hopper in it, or if this has an item in it, Let's actually see if these ones back here, do these still have items in them? They do. Okay, good. So this is actually dispensing quite well. Uh, if this first furnace here has an item in it, then it will, uh, it, if, it, if it has an item in it, it will lock the hoppers, this hopper on this side here, and I have the same thing on this side here, so it won't keep filling up these hoppers here you're only going to have one blaze rod in each of these hoppers at any given time, like once the system works. Well, okay, that's not true actually, that's only for the very first one. Yeah, this is just a way to prevent it from filling all of these up with a bunch of blaze rods and just overstocking the system and that kind of thing. Uh, and then it looks like I did actually set up this, the fuel light that I have at the very top there is actually set up to both of these furnaces too, which I, I kind of forgot that I changed that. Wait, is that actually set up right? Yeah, that's set up right. Okay. Yeah, so that's all the that's a basic rundown of how this thing works. So a couple little ways to prevent it from overfilling and that kind of thing. The only limitations with this, and I have no way of preventing it, are you can't put a full double chest of items in here at a time. You can only put uh, a single chest. Of items, so you can put 27 stacks in at a, any at a single like at a time, because basically, because it has that hopper or the minecart chest, right, is running around the top to drop all the items in. So if you fill that up too much, and you know it's it's filled up all the way, but there's still items that have to go, that it'll just be it'll freeze the system basically, because this powered this powered rail here 
is powered as long as there's no items in this hopper. Whoops. Nope. Nope. Go ahead. Nate. Nope. There you go. So as soon as items are put in that chest, they run down here and into this hopper, which unpowers the rail. So if I put 30 stacks of items in that top chest, it'll run down along here and it will stop the powered rail from being powered. And then it will, oh, whoops, why did, oh, it must've bumped me. Uh, and then it will start loading all the items from this hopper into the minecart chest. But if that minecart chest fills up and there's still items in here locking that powered rail, then it just, it freezes, right? So that's the only limit with this, but really I'm never going to smelt that many items at a single time. So, so yeah, hopefully some of that made a little bit of sense. That was, that was pretty bad, but, uh, here's our portal, you know, it's a portal. Uh, then we have our enchanting thing, or it's going to be our enchanting thing. I'm going to build a little enchanting room. I'll build and move that anvil in there. We'll have a nice little setup, some storage for books, something like that. It'll be nice. Then down here we have our farms. We have Currently we have space for all of our farms, but some of them don't have animals yet. But we have a sheep farm, and then we have a cow farm. And then down here we have a chicken farm. That should be automated. Oh hey, it is actually working. Okay, cool. I'm having troubles with the lava dispenser. And uh, then we have a squid farm. And I don't think the squid farm has done anything. I probably didn't do it right. Oh, it did do stuff. Okay, never mind. We have a functioning squid farm. Nice. And then a little ladder. Or minecart ladder up or downer thingy. Nice. I didn't actually. I didn't actually think this thing was. It's not working very well. That's for sure. But I guess it works. So, got that going for me. Uh, and then these, the way to breed the animals, not the chickens, obviously, but the sheep and the cows. Um, I can't show you how to get up there. It's 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 a little bit of a secret. Okay, and we are up here. Uh, and it looks like I can't cover off my redstone here. Um, so this is the redstone fort. These are my own design because I have some fancy stuff to them uh, And let me show you real quick here. So we'll grab our wheat here and you press the button and That dispenses the water for a certain period of time um, I don't have it that down to a science. I think I have a stack of items and a little hopper clock. So however long that is You breed your sheep or your cows or whatever and then you just when you're done throw them back down and that will dispense all your wheat back into here and you can go because it's all automated. The babies are currently all stuck in the water, but they get pushed down and then that's that. So that's how that works. And the cow is the same one. Uh, we'll press the button. Just press and hold your wheat when you feel that you're not really breeding cows because some of the babies will jump up in the water and then you're, instead of breeding cows, you're just making the babies grow up. So that's kind of a waste of wheat. You throw your wheat down there, got all the little cows, then we just wait for the clock to finish, and there we go. They take some damage because there's a hopper here which is used for getting all the cows in this main central area. I can breed them and they won't fall down or anything, they just stay in there. And that seems to be pulsing actually, so I might just want to take that out. But it, they take half a heart of damage, it doesn't matter. And then all the wheat goes back into here and you can do it again. So yeah, the whole point of this was just, you know, you take your wheat, you hit the button, you do it all, and then you just control Q and you throw it all down and you go over here and you do it with this one. And it's kind of just all automated, kind of. So that was the idea behind that. Uh, yeah. And then the chicken one, just a bunch of chickens. And we have our squid. Our squid thing. If I ever want to jump down there, I can. Uh, and then over here we have the exact same design as the cows and the sheep. This will be for pigs and bunnies. Uh, this farm actually is really nice because the only thing that has to change is this whatever block is here. And then the thing down there. Uh, although I realize I should probably remove this block for when I'm breeding so that I can just dispense the piston. So that it blocks it off yeah but yeah so the only thing this this design works for every single animal 
and the only thing I have to change is whether or not there is a block here. For the cows, I don't need a block. Uh, for the sheep, I don't need a block. But for the this is for the bunnies, and so I need a half slab there because the babies will go through, but the big ones won't. Uh, and then of course I have a half slab at the bottom as well for um, the lava dispensing. And then over here, I just need a um, trap door, and I. I'm not sure I have a trapdoor down there or not. Maybe I don't need one. I don't know. I don't actually remember. But yeah, so this this is for the pigs. So then the ba the big ones won't go through, but the babies will. So yeah, I just have to get some pigs here. Uh, okay, now we're going to go head back down. All right, and uh, yeah, that's about all I have for my uh, tour right now. Um, I do have some more things that are being constructed, you know, behind walls and tint. I don't actually know if, what have I even done back here. Yeah, I'm just working on something over here. And then it'll be expanded down that way. But yeah. So that's it for this one, I think. Yeah, not a whole lot to show. <clears throat> I have some other farms and stuff around the place. Um, like, the place being, like, the entire map, not my base. Uh, yeah, but it's... I'm not going to go show you guys those. It's We have a gold farm, an iron farm a blaze farm, and a slime farm. And I think that's all we have currently. So, but yeah, so this is just a little, you know, little thing introducing you to uh, what I've got so far. And I'll probably just be doing one of these videos like once a week or something. Like, it'll just kind of be like an update video. If I happen to finish something during that week, you know, I'll show you what I did, what I'm working on. Uh, if I didn't finish anything, then maybe I'll just do a little video of me you know, working on whatever I'm working on, I don't know. What I also kind of want to do is make like a giant room and I can just mess around with redstone stuff there, just because. Because, I mean, I mess around with a lot of redstone stuff, but it's all on single player worlds and it'd be kind of fun just to mess around and, and then other people can mess with redstone too and they can, you know, just, you know, other people on the server. But, yeah. So, I think that's going to be it for this one. And I think I've already mentioned this, but this server is just like friends and family, so there's not, I don't think anybody else is doing like a series or anything on it like that, but, and I mean really, like I said, this is more of a single player series, but, so yeah, I think that's it for this one though guys, thank you so much for watching, man, I still need four more Nemo fishes, oh, and you see the light grey stained glass pane, that is to prevent the, the way that this item is made silent involves items basically being in like constantly running through the system not constantly running through but just filling up all the gaps so I just put these here so that those items don't get inputted into a chest until I get more baby Nemos but that's it thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in the next one